Hi guys, this is the next Anatomy and Physiology screencast and this week we're mainly talking about the vascular shunt and what controls it, which is called the VCC. To begin with, we're going to talk about distribution of cardiac output. So how your body knows where to give the blood to, that's distributing something. And as we know, Q increases during exercise. But the cardiovascular system itself dishes out or redistributes the blood to the working muscles during exercise. So it, it moves the blood from all of the blood going to somewhere and it moves it all the way to the muscles. And we can talk about where the somewhere is in a moment. That process of redistributing blood or, or moving blood from one place to the other is called the vascular shunt mechanism. Okay, so at rest, while you're sitting down and watching the screencast with any luck, the majority of blood is not going to your muscles because you don't need it. So 15 to 20% only is supplied to your muscles. However, most of your blood will be going to your organs. So 80 to 85% of blood is shifted to your organs because you need those things at rest. You need your lungs, your brain to be activated, your kidney, your heart, your liver, digestive system. They all need to be functioning while you're at rest because they take priority. However, during exercise, that's different. And the vascular shunt redistributes blood to different parts of the body. So as you start to sprint around during a game, 80 to 85 percent of blood is then shifted to your muscles. So during exercise all that blood shifts over to the muscle groups because we need it, we're moving, it takes priority. And only 15 to 20 percent is supplied to the organs, mainly the brain, because the brain needs to control those muscle actions that are being produced. Okay, so those numbers are a direct flip over. So during exercise, 80 to 85 to the muscles. At rest, it's 15 to 20. During exercise, it's 15 to 20 to the organs. But at rest, it's 80 to 85. So it's just a direct flip. Now, what controls that changing of the blood? Well, it's what we call the vasomotor control center, which is the VCC and it controls that entire vascular shunt mechanism so it says right okay I need that blood to go to the muscles now please I'm going to shift it or right, okay we've stopped exercise I need to shift it back to the organs that's what the VCC does and it works in a very very similar way to the cardiac control center remember we did all that role playing class about the medulla oblongata and the baroreceptors, chemoreceptors etc it's a very similar system so, during exercise, which is what we're concerned about and what the examiner will ask you about, this is how your body changes the blood over to make sure we get more blood to the muscles. It does it in two stages. First of all, the chemoreceptors will be informing uh, the brain that lactic acid and carbon dioxide levels have increased and that oxygen and pH levels have decreased. They work in tandem with the baroreceptors, and we know what those are about, as we did at the chemoreceptors, and they inform the brain that systolic blood pressure has increased or decreased. So it's talking about blood pressure and chemoreceptors talking about chemical changes, pH levels, oxygen levels, carbon dioxide levels, as it did in the other system. Now those two things inform the brain and there's a section of the brain which is part of the VCC vasomotor control center now as soon as the VCC has that information oh Christ we're exercising what do I do well it sends information to the sim via the sympathetic nervous system it increases the sympathetic nerve stimulation okay and that's an important point it increases sympathetic nerve uh, information or stimulation and that stimulation activates two things the sympathetic stimulation 
increase helps vasoconstrict the arterioles of the organs. So the very tiny, tiny arteries before the capillaries, the brain shuts them down. It vasoconstricts, not completely, only to 20%. So it reduces that diameter of the arterioles. So that's the first thing it does. The second thing that does is it also vasoconstricts the pre-capillary sphincters of the organs. So it's just those tiny little areas just before the capillaries, it also closes them down to just reduce the amount of blood that's coming into the organs. All right. So this is the first section of what happens during exercise. That is reducing the amount of blood that's going to the organs via vasoconstricting the arterioles and vasoconstricting the precapillary sphincters. The same process is also happening. So we're going from chemoreceptors collecting information about oxygen, information about pH levels, information about carbon dioxide. The baroreceptors collecting information about blood pressure. That's still occurring because we're still moving in exercise. However, how do we know to open up the blood to the muscles. Well, the VCC also tells um, those blood vessels via the sympathetic nervous system to uh, decrease sympathetic stimulation. So just to recap that again, the chemoreceptors collect uh, data about oxygen, carbon dioxide, pH levels, baroreceptors, blood pressure informs the VCC. The VCC thinks, OK, we're moving. That's OK. I can do something about that. I'm going to decrease the stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system. And what that then does is the opposite to the one before. It vasodilates the arterioles towards the muscles. So it opens up the arterioles of the muscles, allowing more blood and more oxygen into those muscle groups. The second thing that does is it vasodilates those precapillary sphincters of the muscles. So again, just before we get to the capillaries, it dilates all those areas. So it allows much more blood and oxygen levels to get to those working muscles. Okay, As per usual, more complex than usual, uh, an interesting subject, but you need to go over it quite a few times. Uh, bring this information to class and we're going to discuss this a little bit further.